There are times when people refer to another individual as being a prodigal spouse. And there are two ways of splitting that. Some people, they were in a relationship to include a marriage with a person who has now left. And by the way, a prodigal is truly a person who spends wastefully. It's not necessarily a person who departs, but a person who spends wastefully. To include wasting time. So prodigal. The person may or may not be a quote-unquote prodigal. If you're in a relationship before, sometimes a person who leaves is a person who was meant to leave because you're never truly meant to be together. And calling the person a prodigal is slanderous because it's like a person escaped from a prison and the person who set the individual free was God himself. And then to try to assign a label on the person as being a prodigal after God has set the individual free and now the person is closer to God than he or she would have ever been with you. In 1 Kings 16, it speaks about Ahab was a wicked king, but how he got worse after he married the woman Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal. So in some cases, things will end so a person can truly draw closer to the Lord. In 1 Kings 11, Solomon had married, married many women. And being married to a, a thousand women wasn't really an issue. The main issue was some of those women served other gods. And especially when Solomon got older, they led Solomon astray to start worshiping, to start serving other gods. An abomination unto the Lord, and it resulted in the Lord's judgment. Solomon would have been better putting those women away than to keep them around and go down the path of serving their gods. So for some people, it's not that they're prodigals. The Lord has set them free from the enemy's bondage. And the individuals calling those persons a prodigal is a messenger of Satan that came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the Lord made things right by removing a person from what this prophesied about Isaiah 49, the lawful captives. The Lord set the quote-unquote lawful captives free from a, what may have been a lawful yet ungodly situation. Then there's also people talking about prodigal, and the prodigal they're referring to is because they may have a revelation from God or feel as if they have a revelation from God about a person being his or her future spouse. But if the other individual does not have the revelation or has not come into agreement with the revelation, then why call the individual a prodigal? It's one thing if a person has received a revelation also and knows of God and is in rebellion. But for some people, even the story of Abraham and Sarah, for 24 years, we see the Lord telling Abraham, or Abraham at the time, that he was going to be the father of nations. He was going to bless him with where his offspring would outnumber the stars in the sky, the dust of the earth. All kind of things for 24 years. And it wasn't until the 24th year where we see the Lord directly telling Sarah. Sometimes one person knows way before the other. It doesn't make the other person a prodigal. It doesn't make the other person a rebellion against God's word, his will, or his way. It simply means a person is ignorant of certain things. And if that person knows what the Lord's will is and is in rebellion, the Lord will deal with a person. The Lord knows how to bring people to correction. Kind of like Jonah. The Lord told him to go to Nineveh. He went the opposite direction, went west towards Tarshish. The Lord was going to break up that ship. So be careful about calling people prodigals when they may not be prodigals at all. And then there are some people they have been deceived, whether by themselves or the enemy, into thinking a person is their quote-unquote God-ordained spouse. And God has actually been trying to get their attention, let him or her know, that is not the case, that is not the one for you. Well, they are so fixated on the person to the point where they are labeled individual as a prodigal, and even get others to label the individual as a prodigal, to stand in agreement with them, but the standing agreement with them is actually standing against God. And the person who is truly in rebellion is the one who's calling another person a prodigal. If a person is truly a prodigal, then learn from the story of the prodigal son. Regarding the father, the Lord didn't go into a lot of details, but we don't see the father of the prodigal son praying and asking God to humble his son, to bring him down to his knees, 
to snatch him by his neck to ensure he doesn't get any rest until he comes back home. We don't see anything like that. The father let his son go, and the son, when he came to his senses, decided he was going to return home, even if it meant serving a, being a servant in his father's house. Say, if a person is a prodigal, leave the person to the Lord. Pray for that person's best. Because if the person is a prodigal and you truly love the individual, you'll want the best for the individual. And yes, there's also this lesson. If a person is truly what is being described as a prodigal, there are times you may be trying to save that person for, from certain things. But you truly want to save someone who God is trying to correct. Sometimes a person needs a spiritual spanking, if you will. And like it is written in Hebrews 5.8, you know it speaks about Jesus saying even though he was a, was a son, he learned obedience through the things which he suffered. For some people, which may have been the case with you, you learned to obey God because he realized that when you didn't, there was a price to pay. All he had to do was take his hands off of you and the devil started laying hands on you and it was a different story. So when it comes to prodigal, be careful. And also the father, when the prodigal son returned, the father's house wasn't run down. Things kept on going. So if you're waiting on someone you're calling a prodigal, ensure you keep your house in order, keep your life in order, that you're in obedience to God. You're doing what He wills. Because you may be calling someone a prodigal. In a sense, based on how people are using the term, you're a prodigal also. Because your life is centered around another individual, and that individual is not Jesus the Christ. So I pray this message blesses you and bring correction. Order where, is this, where there is this order and draw you closer to the one who loves you more than anyone else, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ.